All right, I'm gonna try a new type video. It's going to be railroad trivia. And if you think you know the answer, put it in the comments uh, down below. Now, YouTube, just move the comment. Uh, it's not much harder to find it. Just scroll all the way to the bottom of the video and you'll see go to comment. But this is the old CNO uh, Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. Now CSX. And this line here is Norfolk Southern. And we aren't all that far from the old Ravana line. If you're not familiar with the Ravana route, uh, Google it. Um, I actually have a video riding a grain train on that, uh, that subdivision, that Ravana. It goes to Gladstone from Richmond along the James River. I'm not far from that. Got here about an hour ago. Uh, let me see what else I can throw in here. Yeah, some of you may have heard me mention overhead, overhead signal system. This is what I mean, and for those of you who ask me freight hopping information a lot, this is what I mean by overhead signal. Let me go down a ways. The overhead signal is set up real high like that because it's more parallel with the engineer. Whereas these little short switches, they call them uh, dwarf signals, the ones that just barely stick up out of the ground, those are dwarfs. Now, I believe this is CTC through here, the computerized traffic control or centralized traffic control. And you'll have an array. Anytime you have six lights, there's a interchange where you can go from one double main to the other double main or back over, and vice versa. That, they just set the lights up in a pattern that tells the engineer what to expect. You don't necessarily have to stop if the switch is already lined. Well, I think that building right there is a darn dead giveaway. But, uh, I, I think I see an old boxcar. Well, shoot, I can't leave my gear. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, it's a little too far to walk down. Oh, with, within comfort. Yeah, this uh, rail here is a, uh, a switch rail. It means it connects this railroad company with another railroad company. It just goes around the corner and merges with that line that crosses there. You know, uh, I've only seen a couple of places that have, I'll try to explain it best I can when we get up here at the four-way crossover, but I have seen a couple of crossovers like this where the rail actually goes up about two and a half inches higher than the other rail 
and the crane just kind of rolled up and over the other rail. Now, of course, the traffic going that way hits some gaps, but it's usually the lesser traveled railroad that gets has to do that. I forget exactly what that type four way is called, so leave in the comment. Yep, there's never been one of these four ways I've ever come in contact with that the nuts and bolts will sit there and turn and fall off while the train's clacking in over top. Remember in Chicago, waiting on a train by one of these there in Holland, South Holland Yard, they had some little holes in the end for the mold and had white albino mice living in it and them little guys would come running out when a train would i don't know how them mice ever lived without ears whoo man that has really seen some wear yeah you can tell Man, that's pretty deep, too. See, after a while, these points right on the edges get worn down, so they have to come out and add some steel back to them. You can see where they did right here. They just get so wore down that it risks the wheel grabbing onto it and rolling up over. So they try to make contact points as sharp as they can. That way it's just a, a big bang and go over. Now, that right there, that inner rail, that rusty one, that there's your guide rail. And frogs are no, these are called frogs where the rail crosses another. Uh, and they're notorious for trains rolling up and over because the train wants to go this way and that way when it crosses a four-way so that just if that does happen too bad that guide rail just keeps that flange of the wheel in between and you'll see that on bridges too uh trestles you'll see a big long inner rail on each side Two rails that run down and uh, that's in case a train ever derails on the overpass or the trestle it kind of keeps that train straight even though it derails it it's still kept within the line uh, up to a point, you get too fast, and it'll just rip that rail out. But usually bridges have a speed restriction. So, uh, I don't know what else to talk about. Yeah, some train stickers I got. Yep, waiting on my next train. Uh, yeah, I... One time, uh, speaking of hand getting run over by a train, let's see, let me set this camera down. Maybe. Oh. Yeah, speaking of uh, getting run over by a train, uh, it must have been back like 1993 or 4. I met a guy in Atlanta and we were heading south. And uh, I had been drinking really heavy. And I come out of a blackout and he's holding his foot up in the air, blood just rushing down. I said, man, what'd you do? I mean, we were stopped. Uh, I guess waiting on another train. And I looked down and I could see his foot was mashed off on the end. 
So I ran about 30 car lengths up to the lead locomotive, went in the front door of it, and said, hey man, you got a guy back there that's got his foot run over. I said, I got him off the train on the conductor side. You got to call 911. About 20 minutes later, they're carrying a wooden stretcher across the train and hauled him off. That's about the only blood and guts I've really seen besides my own. Uh, uh, Maybe work my way to something else. Uh, I wish I could show how those welds are put in. You know, I think I'll put a link in the description of how they weld these two pieces together for the ribbon rail. I'll show what you mean. See how the two rails are joined right there? Well, they weld them, and I'll put a link in the description that shows shows that being done. Uh, this will be my first video. I'm going to try to make a lot more, and I'm going to test each one out. See if it's having that problem with that upload data. Stopping on like 64 GB. But anyway, I'll go ahead and test this video out I guess